and welcome, and a very happy Halloween to you. I'm just preparing a few finger snacks for our trick-or-treaters tonight. <sighs> you know, Halloween always has been my favorite time of year. Gee, I wonder why that is. <laughs> well, tonight I have a very special treat for you. An original story by yours truly, entitled, That Disturbing Feeling. Enjoy! You know that uneasy, disturbing feeling you get? When you sit on the toilet and it's warm, because somebody else sat on it shortly before you? Yeah, I hate that feeling. The thing that makes it even more disturbing for me, though, is the fact that I live alone. It started about a week ago. I was outside on my front porch watching hummingbirds buzz around my olive tree and eating a bowl of ice cream. I love ice cream so much. Sadly, it does not love me back. Before long, I needed to go to the bathroom so bad, I was afraid I was going to brown my pants. I hurriedly threw my spoon, bouncing it off the side of the bowl and spraying ice cream soup onto the patio as I took off running inside and towards the bathroom. Before my cheeks even touched the seat, I was laying waste to the bowl. However, the moment I hit the seat, I froze. It was warm, as if somebody had just been sitting there. My gaze quickly leapt from corner to corner of the room, making a mental check of where everything should have been. Toothbrush on the right side of the sink. Check. Yesterday's clothes laying on the floor by the door. Check. Dirty clothes hamper on the other side of the room. Closed. Check. Having found nothing else out of the ordinary, I finished my business and assumed it was just my imagination before washing my hands. Although, as I went to wash my hands, I noticed the bottom of the sink was slightly wet. Not wanting to freak myself out further, I just assumed that the sink probably just had a slow drip, washed my hands, and left the bathroom. The rest of the day was uneventful, other than an unwanted call from my ex's friend Annie whom I could not stand that b mm <clears throat> pain in the rear. She had called to complain about me butt-dialing her the night before at 3 a.m., which, honestly, I didn't know how that was possible as I had passed out drunk on the couch by midnight. As I went to the bathroom to brush my teeth, I couldn't shake the earlier occurrence out of my head, so I brushed as quickly as I could and set the toothbrush on the right side of the sink before heading to bed. The next morning, I awoke refreshed and ready to start the day. I got up and threw some clothes on and went to the bathroom to brush my teeth. As I reached my right hand down to pick up my toothbrush, I realized something was wrong. The brush was on the left side of the sink, not the right, and again the sink was slightly wet on the bottom. Had I gotten up and brushed my teeth in my sleep, I thought to myself as I ran my tongue across my teeth. No. No, I definitely had not brushed my teeth, I realized, as I felt the fuzzy buildup on my molars. At this point, I was completely freaked out. I ran to the phone and started to dial 911 before asking myself, what am I going to tell the police? My toothbrush was on the wrong side of the sink this morning? I would just sound like a moron, and they wouldn't believe me. Not being a gun owner, I walked to the kitchen and grabbed the biggest knife that I own before searching the house. I walked slowly from room to room, checking every cabinet, under every bed, every nook and cranny that I could find. However, I couldn't find a thing. Not a single thing out of place. Not a single cabinet cracked open. Nothing. I must be going crazy, I thought to myself. 
I then went to work, obviously now running late after having my freak out in the morning. I spent the rest of the day at work dwelling on the situation, going over everything in my mind, trying to remember where every item in my house is, so I could tell if anything was different when I got home. Upon getting home, I hesitated before opening the front door, afraid of what I might find on the other side waiting for me. As I walked in, I was greeted by a completely normal looking entranceway. Nothing out of place. I did a quick run through the house and couldn't find anything had changed since the morning. Relieved, I sat down on the couch and turned on my TV. As I turned on the TV, I noticed it was on AMC. I couldn't help but question myself. Did I watch AMC last time I watched TV? Before chuckling to myself and thinking, <laughs> Man, I must be going crazy if I'm suspicious of even the TV. Before long, I started hearing a disturbingly loud rumble coming from my stomach. Remembering I had not even taken the time to eat breakfast this morning, I headed to the kitchen to get some leftovers out of the fridge. I opened the fridge and began to browse through the contents, looking for the leftover hamburger helper that I knew I should have from the other night. I could not find it anywhere. Discouraged, I closed the door and walked over to the pantry, removing a bag of popcorn. As I was putting the popcorn into the microwave, I noticed something odd. There was a Tupperware dish and fork sitting in the sink to the right of the microwave. Along the bottom of the Tupperware dish and sink were small traces of discarded hamburger meat and bits of noodles. At this point, I knew beyond a doubt that this wasn't my imagination and I needed to do something. I once again debated calling the cops, but what would I tell them? I still had nothing tangible that would make them take me serious. Remembering the horror movies and stories I grew up watching, I decided to do the one thing that characters rarely do, buy a video camera. I then grabbed a piece of bread out of the bag on the counter and headed to the store. After purchasing the camera and picking up a few groceries, I headed back home. Upon walking into the house, I hurriedly opened up the box and removed the camera. Without even reading the instructions, I excitedly reached for the power button, knowing that soon this would all be over. Nothing. Nothing. The camera would not turn on. Frustrated, I reached for the quick setup guide and opened it up. Step 1. Charge the camera. I immediately put my hand on my forehead and began to laugh at my stupidity. Of course, the camera needs to be charged before you can turn it on. I gathered up the charger or cable and plugged it into one of the open outlets in the living room for it to charge overnight. That night, I slept like a baby knowing that the following day, I would have the capability to getting to the bottom of this mystery. Upon waking up, I walked into the living room, hearing a strange sound coming from my computer. I immediately felt all the blood run out of my face as I watched a video repeating on my computer screen. It was a video of me, sleeping. As my eyes dropped in disbelief, Another wave of terror ran through me as I read, Nice Try, written on a piece of paper on the keyboard. I am not even ashamed to admit I immediately ran out of the house and straight to my neighbor's house wearing nothing but my boxers. I think any sane person would have done the same thing under the circumstances. I did, however, freak out poor Mrs. Wilson. So much so... She frantically called the police, reporting that her crazed neighbor was pounding on her front door, shouting and wearing nothing but his boxers. Needless to say, that was an interesting conversation with the police, and I profusely apologized for scaring Mrs. Wilson. 
After telling the police my story, explaining the things being moved, the video and the note, they went in and searched my house. Time seemed to slow down to a crawl as I waited for the officers to find whoever was invading my privacy and taping me while I slept. And after what seemed like an eternity, the police came out of the house mightily chuckling to themselves. They informed me there was no video playing on the computer and no note. They asked me if I could go inside with them and show them the camera to see if the video was still on the camera. As I walked into the living room with the officers, my heart sank as I saw the empty outlet where the camera had been charging. The camera and the charger were both gone. I shakingly explained to the officers that the camera was plugged in right there. They dismissively told me that if I noticed anything else strange to let them know and for me to go get dressed and try to get some sleep. At this point, I wanted nothing more than to go and get a hotel somewhere else and not stay another night in my house. However, I am not made of money and I cannot afford a hotel. Therefore, I decided to do the next best thing and I slept in my car. I wanted to be able to keep an eye on my house, so if I saw lights turn on during the night, I could get the police to come by and show them that I'm not crazy. I, however, did not see any lights or movement around the house that night. Finally, tonight, after three days of sleeping in my car and not seeing anything odd happening in the house, I decided to move back in, thinking that maybe, just maybe, the person had left as to not get caught by the police and would not return. I did, however, sleep in the bedroom with the door shut and locked and a steak knife hidden in between the mattress and the bed frame. I awoke to a loud bang of a door slamming shut. Immediately I called the police and reported that somebody was in my house. I could hear them walking through the living room into the kitchen and rummaging through my fridge. The operator instructed me to hide in the bedroom closet until the police arrived. I grabbed my knife and huddled in the corner of my closet behind some clothes. After what seemed like an hour, I heard two officers shouting for whoever was out there to put their hands on the wall. This was followed by crying and incoherent shouting from a woman. A few minutes later, I heard my front door slam shut. I hesitantly walked to the bedroom door and opened it slowly, knife in hand. As I walked into the living room, I was greeted by a bright light shining in my eyes and an officer shouting at me to put my weapon down as he pointed his gun at my chest. I slowly put my knife down on the table next to the door and proceeded to tell the officer my name and that I was the home owner. He led me outside to meet the other officer who was putting the woman in his squad car. After examining my ID, the officer showed me a copy of my front door key that she had somehow made. He then explained that the woman claimed I had given her the key and allowed her to come and stay at my house so she would not have to sleep on the street. I of course assured the officer that I had not granted her permission and most certainly had not given her a key to my house. After filling out my report with the officer, they left with the woman in the back of the squad car. Now, I'm here at my computer, unable to sleep from the night's, no, weeks events, emotional and physically exhausted. I guess I should feel safer now that I know that the woman has been terrorizing me is gone. However, 
I can't seem to shake the feeling that something is wrong. Have I just gotten so used to expecting the worst that now that it's finally over I'm looking for something to be out of place? Now, as I stare at the empty table next to the bedroom door, where I put my knife, I can't remember. Did the officer take my knife? Oh, it sounds like the trick-or-treaters are here. I do hope they enjoy their treats. Trick-or-treat! Oh, hello, my dear. It's a very cute mummy costume you got there. You know, my friend Ghost Mummy would absolutely love it. Ah, well, enjoy. Happy Halloween. I love the sound of a happy trick-or-treater. <sighs> well, I guess that's all for the night. Ta-ta for now. Have a very happy Halloween.